The Department of Psychiatry at University of Illinois Hospital and Health Sciences System has developed a comprehensive and integrated approach to address major psychiatric disorders and improve diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of mental illness. One of the things we do well in this department is in the area of depression. From depression in children to depression in adults and depression in the elderly. What we try to do is cover the entire lifespan and have both clinicians and researchers do research and take care of patients across the entire age group. My own area of interest is depression in the elderly, where there's a lot of emphasis that goes into studying the interface between biology and psychology. We have a, a very extensive program to study mood disorders, including bipolar disorders and unipolar depression in children. The mood disorders impact children profoundly in how they function at home and school and among their peer group. It's really important to find treatments that would help these children function better at all aspects of their life. We developed pharmacotherapy algorithms that are systematic in addressing symptoms with medication. We developed psychotherapy based on our understanding of the brain circuitry function, where the thinking and feeling parts of the brain impact each other. We also are developing cognitive remediation models of intervention where we will be able to build memory systems in the brain using modern computerized techniques that are gingerly modified for how children can develop new skills. These new innovative techniques are based on evidence and these children as well as families are given very compassionate care you start with validating the mothers and fathers and building one family at a time as we take care of one child at a time. There was such a acknowledgement of my feelings that finally somebody understood me, that got me past that point of maybe perhaps poor me and there was hope that, okay, I can do this. Patient-oriented research at its simplest is research in which patients and the clinical care that they are delivering is central to the research questions being asked. For us in our laboratory for the last 10 years, we've been working on brain models of how different regions in the brain talk to one another when the brain is processing and managing negative emotions. Our brain imaging research is being conducted in individuals across the entire lifespan. By having a brain model which consists of an explanation or a mechanism about how certain brain regions are talking to one another as the brain is managing emotions, particularly negative emotions, we can then test these models in patients to identify targets which treatments might be acting on in terms of working or not working. We have collaborations with other investigators in the country to handle and to help us with understanding the molecular underpinnings of a patient's depression and anxiety. We are one site amongst many in a network of depression centers across the country. And by being a coalition of different research uh, centers across the country studying depression, we're able to leverage the um, strength of several units uh, together to synergistically better understand depression by having the power in terms of numbers of sharing data across multiple sites. We've understood over the past few years that women are at increased risk for depression when they go through reproductive transitions. So when they have babies, when they age reproductively and transition through the menopause. Our work in this is to improve how we detect and screen depression in relation to these menopausal and reproductive transitions. So our work tells busy clinicians how to screen in clinics to make sure that they're detecting depression and when they see it, they're treating it. There's good evidence in animals that if you take an animal's ovaries out, they become anxious. So estrogen has a role in helping animals to maintain proper levels of anxiety. What we're studying is the role of estrogen and estrogen-like substances in helping women deal with anxiety. When women are losing their ovarian function as they transition through the menopause, we're doing a randomized clinical trial 
to determine whether soy, estrogen, or placebo influences how they respond to anxiety in their daily life and how they respond to stressors in the laboratory. In the future, what we plan to do is to expand and build on our existing strengths. We have the entire spectrum covered from bench to the clinic to the community to move from neurons to neighborhoods. We will develop stronger programs that do basic neurobiological research, have clinical translational research bridge between laboratory and patient care, and patient care that's informed patient care. We need to involve more clinician scientists and physician scientists, physicians who see patients and also do research. I think that's a very strong combination and university hospitals like ours are well suited to develop this cadre of investigators and clinicians who will advance the field.